earlier, we have subdivided or classified the whole range of materials in terms of electrical properties in different subgroups. Uh, some of them are conductors, some of them are semiconductors, superconductors and there are a group of materials are, which are uh, called insulators. Uh, it is expected that the electrical conductivity in these insulators is very low or in other words the electrical resistivity is very high. We have seen earlier that the electrical resistance is orders of magnitude larger than that of metals or semiconductors. But when we apply some electric field, uh, we are putting in some energy and therefore, the materials are supposed to respond to this electric field. So, today's topic is what happens when you apply electric field uh, across a insulating material having a very, very high electrical resistance. Obviously, there is no possibility of long range charge transport. Uh, we do not get uh, appreciable amount of current flowing through the material that means, the charge charges charge species are not moving over a longer distance. However, these charge species do respond to an applied field and uh, let us see what exactly happens. Basically, the charge species moves within the material over a small distance, not the large distance or across the material what happens in a conductor. So, there is no long range charge transport, there is no long range movement of the charge species. However, there is a short range movement uh, may be limited to the interatomic spacings. So, within the interatomic spacing there is a movement of the charge species, but they do not break their bonds with the ion cores. Uh, however, they change their positions and that is how uh, some of the energy get stored in this material. So, the insulators are basically form capacitors okay. and uh, if we look at the basic phenomena what happens uh, in an insulator when we apply electric field or in other words sometimes they are called dielectric materials. Uh, there is a dielectric phenomena which takes place and that is what we want to discuss here. The materials used to insulate, but in general uh, since they have a very high resistance they insulate from a conductor. So, if a particular conductor has to be insulated from another conductor or uh, from its environment these insulators act as an insulating barrier. So, materials to use to insulate an electric field from its surroundings are required in a large number of electrical as well as electronic devices. So, in addition to the dielectric properties, the simple insulation is also important and whenever we are using a semiconductor device on a, or a conducting materials uh, to insulate it from its surroundings a insulating material is quite useful and that is another uh, function of an insulator. The electrical insulator obviously, must have a very low conductivity as I mentioned just now or very high resistivity to prevent the flow of current. So, there is no flow of current. Ideally, a insulator should have a zero current or infinite resistance, but in reality there is always a finite amount of current flows through it sometimes it is called a leakage current and that can be measured also uh, with different kind of instruments. The examples of some of these insulators uh, we have seen earlier once again uh, can be repeated here. The porcelain basic insulators, clay based insulators or clay based ceramics, aluminum oxide, alumina, cordierite is another uh, important insulating ceramics, uh, mica 
is a natural uh, mineral and also uh, one of the ceramics and that is the uh, layer kind of ceramics and some glasses. Glasses of different compositions, some glasses of course fairly conducting whereas most of these glasses are insulators. And of course, there is a range of plastics or polymers which are in general uh, insulators, but uh, maybe uh, you are aware that uh, there are examples of plastics or polymers which are also conducting in nature. So, uh, we are talking about basically different kind of insulators and uh, one of the best way to understand what happens uh, when an insulator is under an electric field is to uh, look at a capacitance or capacitor. Okay. Capacitor is a very simple device where you have two metal electrodes, one is positively charged and is negatively charged and in between you have a gap and that gap may be filled up with an insulator. Okay. Even air is a good insulator, fairly good insulator. So, uh, between the metal, between the two metals if there is an insulator that can be called as a capacitance, capacitor and we have some uh, important parameters of this device as well as the materials. So, here is an example of a what we call a parallel plate capacitor. It is as uh, the diagram shows that we have a positively charged conducting plate and on the other side negatively charged conducting plate and the gap is about D, spacing is D and the area is A. We apply a voltage V across this uh, two electrodes and the charge which can be stored, okay, charge is not flowing away, the charge can be basically stored, the total amount of charge stored is equal to C into V, C is the capacitance of that system or device and the vo vo V is the applied voltage. This gives rise to a uh, few more equations like V equal to Q by C and that is equal to integration I dt by C because charge is nothing but the accumulation of total, uh, this is the total charge over a period of time. Uh, flowing in the form of a current. So, the total current flow over a period of time gives you the total charge which is accumulated or flown across the two electrodes. And uh, C is the capacitance of that, it is a device parameter and it is uh, uh, has some unit which we will discuss in a few minutes. It also gives rise to another equation. Uh, in terms of I, the current flowing through the capacitance okay, or capacitor. Uh, although we say it is an insulator, but there is a current sets up uh, within, the, within the material. Uh, it is not flowing across the material, but there is some current flowing because charge is getting accumulated and therefore, flow of charge is nothing but the current. So, that current uh, is given by uh, I equal to C dV dt, uh, the derivative of voltage with respect to time. In fact, we will uh, look into another situation. Uh, there are two pictures here. One is the same thing what we have shown earlier. It is in between we have a free space. Uh, one is positively charged uh, plate and the negatively charged plate and in between we do not have any material here it is evacuated. So, vacuum or free space. So, that also give rise to some kind of a capacitance uh, value and charge accumulation. However, on the right you have a material, you have a solid is basically an insulator. If it is a conductor then charge will be flowing from uh, one electrode to the other. So, we are not a conductor cannot be used obviously for charge accumulation or forming a capacitor. Therefore, we have a insulating material 
in other words it is called a dielectric material. So, all the insulators have a dielectric phenomena and uh, that is what we are going to discuss here. So, there is an accumulation of charge, but there is a redistribution of charge. Okay. So, whenever there is a material uh, insulating material some changes do take place within the within the charge distribution or so far as the charge distribution within the volume of the material is concerned and how it is done that will be discussed. So, initially we have one situation where is there is a vacuum, vacuum being a good insulator uh, certain amount of charge can be also be stored when two conductor plates are kept in vacuum that is shown in A. However, when a dielectric is placed that vacuum is replaced by a uh, some kind of insulator and additional amount of charge can be stored due to better polarizability uh, of the dielectric. The term polarizability will explain uh, in a few moment. So, there is a difference between a vacuum situation where is a vacuum in between the two electrodes and there is a insulator or a dielectric medium we call it dielectric medium. So, uh, there is a more effective charge accumulation or energy, uh, energy storing capability whenever there is a good insulator. So, that is what has been shown here. We can see we can see some more equations uh, like this uh, the same for the vacuum whatever equation we have written earlier is C 0 the capacitance. Capacitance is uh, a geometric function. So, it is A by D, A is the area, D is the distance and we introduce a term called epsilon naught, epsilon 0 uh, multiplied by A by D that is the capacitance of this simple device. So, uh, if you have a vacuum then vacuum has some kind of insulating property and that is characterized or the dielectric property is characterized by epsilon 0 which is known as the permittivity, permittivity of the free space. Okay. It is a constant and uh, we will come across this particular term uh, in, uh, in repeatedly during our discussion. However, if we have a insulator as you have shown earlier, earlier picture uh, C changes to capacitance, capacitance with the uh, insulating material in place. So, C 0 epsilon prime by epsilon naught. So, epsilon naught once again is the permittivity dielectric permittivity of the free space and it is a constant and C 0 has been defined earlier uh, in the above equation in the uh, previous equation and so C 0 multiplied by epsilon naught by epsilon epsilon uh, sorry epsilon prime by epsilon naught where epsilon prime is the permittivity dielectric permittivity of the material which you have placed which have, which replaces the vacuum. So, uh, you have a overall capacitance uh, with the insulator in place is C 0, C 0 has been defined above and K prime, K prime is the relative permittivity uh, or in other words K prime is equal to the epsilon prime by epsilon naught and it is sometimes also represented as epsilon r. The relative permittivity or k prime when we write k prime is also called the dielectric constant. So, dielectric constant k prime uh, uh, in some places one can see also only k, but k prime is uh, a better representation that will be clear when we discuss later. Uh, why we are using k prime, but uh, in many literature you will also find k just k as the dielectric constant and epsilon r is the relative permittivity which are basically the same quantity. Uh, this dielectric constant is a material parameter and it does not depend on its shape and size of the material, but it depends on the structure of the material, the composition of the material and the particular type of bonding chemical bonding it has. So, k is a material parameter of very importance and that is how one can characterize 
a dialectic material. So, uh, once one somebody wants to design a capacitor a particular value uh, and charge storing capacity of a particular system or um, device k prime or k dialectic constant of the material is of very utmost importance and prime importance. So, that one can design the precisely what kind of capacitors can be uh, fabricated out of that. These are just uh, uh, the definitions of the different uh, parameters used here epsilon 0 is the dielectric permittivity of free space vacuum, epsilon prime is the dielectric permittivity of the insulator and k prime is the relative permittivity dielectric permittivity or the dielectric constant of the insulator. So, it is also the same as epsilon r k prime and epsilon r are actually the same quantity uh, it has, they have been used in different context. Few uh, important equations once again uh, and some of the units ok. Capacitance is just uh, what have been indicated epsilon r epsilon naught a by d a by d is the geometric factor of the capacitance and q the charge accumulation is epsilon r epsilon naught a v by d uh, because basically uh, q equal to c v ok. So, this part is c and this part c v and so that once again the same equation has been written here. Now, the units, uh, units of uh, charge is known is nothing but coulomb and capacitance, capacitance is farad ok. V is the potential, potential difference in volt, small d is the separation or uh, the thickness, thickness of the insulator and it is in meter. Epsilon naught which is a uh, constant term and it is the permittivity of the vacuum or sometimes called permittivity of the free space and uh, the value is 8.854 into 10 to the minus 12 coulomb square per meter square or farad per meter. So, farad per meter is a more uh, common unit which is used and epsilon r the dielectric constant is nothing but it is a relative number and it does not have any unit. Next we look at what exactly happens in an atomistic scale uh, when we apply an electric field uh, against an insulator. So, a dielectric material responds to an electric field differently than the free space because it is constituted of charged species. Okay, free space does not have a charge species, uh, so uh, the permittivity is much much less. Okay. So, and therefore, uh, when you apply a electric field against an insulator which is having a charge species, uh, some of these charge species may be displaced to a limited extent thus neutralize a part of the applied electric field. So, as I mentioned earlier whenever we apply a field electric field or an energy uh, the material or uh, the internal structure of the material internal constituents of the material respond in a particular manner ok. In case of uh, conductor uh, the free electrons or the free charge carriers moves over a larger distance from one end of the solid to the another or one end of the medium to the another medium another end of the medium whereas, in an insulator because they cannot move over a large distance and that is the property of an insulator. So, they move to a very limited extent ok. So, they do change their position geometric position, uh, but in a very very limited extent and that is the characteristics of a particular material and the particular structure particular chemical bond it has and so on so forth. So, once again we can have uh, this kind of uh, there are more or less the same uh, equations has been written slightly differently. So, starting with v equal to q by c 
uh, and c equal to k prime c 0, c 0 is the uh, capacitance of a vacuum uh, of a particular geometric uh, configuration. These two gives rise to these two equations give rise to another equation which is v equal to q by k prime q over q prime by c naught okay, or c 0. So, you have basically a ratio of q by k naught to say 0, c 0 is the capacitance of the vacuum. So, it indicates that only a fraction of the charge known as the free charge which is q by k prime. So, this is k prime is a number. So, q prime is uh, uh, some fraction of q sets up the voltage across the electrodes and rest of the charge known as the bound charge is neutralized by the polarization of the dielectric material. So, there are two different forms of charge or two different kind of uh, uh, situation uh, happens simultaneously of course, and one forms the bound charge and there is free, free charge. So, free charge, free charge uh, which is what q by k sets up the voltage across the uh, capacitor, whereas the bound charge actually does some internal rearrangement of the charges okay, and neutralize and gets neutralized by that process. So, this can be shown here bound and free charges, this is two uh, parallel plates or the electrodes, these are conductors one at the top and the bottom and uh, we are applying a negative charge or negative volt, negative uh, um, uh, potential, negative potential on the top and the positive potential on the uh, bottom, bottom electrodes. So, these are the charges available within the insulators okay, within the uh, between in between the two um, electrodes we have some charges already present uh, in the material. They get reorganized, they get reorganized when we apply electric field. So, we have two types of charges one is a with the square all are negative charges of course, but one is a square and another is circled. Okay. Here also all of them are positive charges because it is connected with the positive potential. So, you have two different kind of charges one is circ uh, encircled by a square and it is uh, circ circle. Okay. Now, you can see here um, these positive charges has a corresponding negative charge inside the material and then that is neutralized by another positive charge. So, there is a realignment there is a realignment of the charges against this positive and negative charge. Okay. So, you have uh, uh, whatever positive and negative charges were present uh, either in the form of cations, anions or maybe the electrons uh, as well as uh, protons. So, all of them will realign themselves against the electric field and some of them will be neutralized. So, these are the bound charges. So, these charges inside whatever charges inside the material is they will bind some charges on the surface of the electrodes. So, on this side the negative charge will be bind by this positive charge and on this side this negative charge will bind uh, this positive charge. Okay. So, that way there will be realignment of positive and negative charges and each of them actually forms a dipole. So, these are formation of dipoles that means, a positive and negative charge separated by a distance. So, these are as a result of the application of the electric field you are generating some dipoles within the insulator and these dipoles are binding some charges on the surface of the electrodes. However, all the charges available on the surface of the electrodes are not bound by the dipoles created or generated uh, within the solid only a fraction of them will be bound and others will remain free and that is what it is shown here in the same diagram these are free charges circled ones are free charges there is no corresponding dipoles on this side. 
So, these are free charges which actually they develops the voltage uh, on the plate uh, the metal plates metal electrodes and these are the changes which takes place within the solid. So, we have two types of charges on the surface of the plate one is the bound charge and is the free charge. So, that is what has been described uh, earlier uh, it indicates that only a fraction of the charge known as the free charge which is given by this sets up the voltage across the electrodes rest of the charge known as the bound charge is neutralized by the polarization of the dielectric material. So, this is what we call basically the polarization that means creation of some dipoles within the material. Initially we will find later on that these charges might not be forming dipoles or they are not bound uh, to each other. So, they are more uh, randomly distributed of course, in a crystal there are certain amount of periodicity, but they might not be aligned to this. So, this alignment and formation of the uh, dipoles actually the phenomena is called the polarization. So, uh, when you ap apply an electric field against a insulator the charges gets polarized and that polarization is what we call the dielectric polarization. So, um, this is an important phenomena uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, a dielectric material. So, polarization is a very common phenomena and very important phenomena whenever we are talking about a dielectric material uh, and it is applied uh, electric field is applied against it. So, uh, polarization and flux density displacement of charge species in a dielectric material results in creation of electric dipoles that is what has been discussed which in turn enhances the flux density. So, it is called the dielectric flux density both are the consequences of dielectric polarization. So, they are related in the following manner. So, we have two terms one is the polarization term and there is the dielectric displacement or flux density. Okay. So, these are the two terms how they are dis, uh, related d the displacement or the flux density is, pro, is equal to epsilon naught again the permittivity of the free space comes in uh, multiplied by the electric field electric field not the voltage or the electric field plus polarization okay. p is called the polarization. So, dielectric displacement of the flux density is equal to epsilon naught E plus polarization and that is all nothing but epsilon prime multiplied by E. So, actually dielectric displacement is D equal D equal to epsilon prime multiplied by E and this is again equal to epsilon naught into E plus P. P is the polarization. So, this is the uh, one can see this is the polarization of the free space and this is the polarization of the uh, insulating phase or the dielectric material in between. So, this is the relationship between the two parameters. We will also have a relationship because polarization is the result of creation of dipole moments within the material. The polarization P is also defined as the total quantity of dipole moment generated per unit volume of the material. Okay. So, that is the polarization uh, P is equal to uh, uh, N multiplied by mu N is the number of dipoles generated per unit volume and mu is the dipole moment the moment of each dipole mu is also given by uh, q into d q into d where q is the uh, pair of charge that means one is a positive charge and there is a negative charge with the same uh, magnitude so plus q and minus q separated by a distance d gives you the dipole moment q into d okay so that is the dipole moment mu and how many dipoles are created how many dipoles are created and what is their uh, moment. 
di uh, dipole moment and what is the total number of dipole moment n is the total number of n is the number of dipoles generated per unit volume so per unit volume whatever the total number of dipoles uh, sorry the dipole moment generated that's the measure of polarization so higher is the dipole moment creation higher is the polarization higher is the moment dial, uh, dipole moment for each of the pairs that also create uh, more dipoles so if q increases p increases if d increases also p increases and if n increases or n is more p is also more that means how many dipoles are getting generated there is also another uh, parameter uh, used in dielectric literature that is dielectric susceptibility uh, from an earlier relationship these are rearrangement of those equations earlier used p equal to epsilon prime e minus epsilon not into e so p is actually the the parameter related to the insulator or the dielectric material so this is the total effect that is the epsilon prime into e uh, subtract from that about uh, the so called uh, the vacuum so if you uh, if you subtract the magnitude or the quantity of the polarization from the vacuum that from the overall polarization that is actually the polarization of the solid so that can also be written in this form epsilon prime minus epsilon not into e and since there is a relationship between this and k so if you uh, it can be written as epsilon prime within bracket k minus k prime minus 1 into e so this is what uh, we can know by rearranging the earlier relationships we have used so the dielectric susceptibility actually it is chi it's not x it is chi uh, is defined as the ratio of the polarization to the electric field it is also the ratio of the bound charge density to the free charge density okay so chi is actually uh, we have discussed few minutes back about the bound charge and the uh, free charge so that ratio is also is actually the dielectric susceptibility uh, another parameter used in dielectric literature so chi is again defined by polarization total p by epsilon not, not e okay so this is for the vacuum this is for the vacuum and this is for the material so p by epsilon prime e equal to actually k prime minus 1 so it is the dielectric constant minus 1 is just the dielectric susceptibility so there is a very simple relationship between the dielectric susceptibility and the dielectric constant so it is the one less than the uh, dielectric constant or relative dielectric constant now uh, there is also a concept uh, of local field local electric field experienced by the charged species within a dielectric is different from that of the external electric field applied from the outside due to the polarization of the species surrounding any particular species okay what if we want to find out what is the electric field experienced by this particular charge species when a electric field e is applied from outside so this is once again uh, a parallel plate capacitors these are the two electrodes one is positively charged and is negatively charged and uh, we are applying a field e now this inside the material a particular charge species what it is experiencing is not exactly equal to the e is actually e prime which is slightly different from what we measure from outside so that also have to be uh, considered while you are talking about what is happening inside the material so that's what 
it is called the local field, uh, it is local field is different than what we apply from outside and that is because all these things are dipoles, okay. dipoles have already been generated and they have some create some internal field in addition to the external field. So, the external field generates these dipoles and these dipoles has an influence on the neighboring dipoles or neighboring charge. So, as a result the at a particular point the any charge species experienced or the field experienced by this charge species is different from what we apply from outside. So, when we are trying to calculate what is the polarizability and what will be the dipole moment and so on, uh, one has to take care of this kind of situation. We are not going to the uh, details of the calculation, but only uh, it will be convenient to know that this uh, dielectric, this electric field is different from uh, that applied from the outside and that is called the local electric field E prime, normally it is called E prime which is different from E. Okay. So, uh, that is another situation one has to keep in mind. With this in mind, uh, if we want to try find out a another parameter which is called polarizability that is the ability of the material, uh, ability of the material to get polarized. So, that is what we call the polarizability and uh, that is defined in this manner the average dipole moment which is mu bar uh, of the element ele uh, of the elementary particle would be is proportional to the local field. Okay. So, the average dipole moment mu bar of the elementary particle or the elementary uh, dipole is proportional to the local field okay, E prime which we have just discussed and the proportionality constant is known as the polarizab polarizability or the alpha. Okay. I think there should be change it. this should be elementary dipole. Right. Uh, is proportional to the local field E prime and the proportionality constant is known as the polarizability uh, uh, with a um, with a parameter like alpha. So, mu bar is proportional to the E prime not E that is the only thing one has to remember it is not E, E is the external field normally applied and E prime is the uh, external is the internal field or the local field experienced by this particular element or uh, dipole. Okay. So, and the proportionality constant is the polarizability and it gives a, an idea how easily or difficult it will be to polarize a particular material. So, it is again once again a material parameter and in terms of the polarizability the overall polarization may be expressed as P equal to N alpha E prime. So, once again it is the polarization total dipole moment. So, this is the dipole moment for each elementary dipole and these are the number of dipoles per unit volume. So, once again in another way P can be expressed in terms of the polarizability another material parameter uh, of any particular material. Well, with this uh, phenomenological, phenomenological description of uh, what happens when we apply an electric field uh, against an insulator, what happens, what kind of dipoles 
created basically there is a polarization, the more number of dipoles are created and that dipole gives rise to dipole moment and the polarization is basically a measure of how much dipole moment uh, is generated per unit volume. So, uh, ultimately when we apply an electric field to an insulator instead of a large range conduction large uh, long range conduction uh, long range movement of the charge carriers there is formation of a dipoles. So, some amount of reorientation of the charge distribution uh, redistribution of the charges takes place in inside the material and that absorbs the energy ok. That absorbs the energy and therefore, the energy electrical energy gets stored inside a capacitor or uh, in a within a dielectric material. Now, there are different mechanisms by which these dipoles can be generated ok. Dipoles as you can understand it is nothing but uh, uh, two charges one positive charge and another negative charge separated by a distance and that distance is uh, so uh, that, that has to be separation. So, the center of positive charge and the center of negative charge must not coincide. So, initially in, in a solid in a solid or a liquid the center of positive charge and the center of negative charge normally coincides and therefore, there is no net distance of separation. So, dipole moment is 0 that is the normal concept, but when you apply an electric field there is a distance of separation the net distance of separation the center of positive charge and the center of negative charge uh, distribution uh, throughout the material gets separated and you form a dipole and uh, that is what has been given here. There are four different mechanisms distinct mechanisms by which there is a distance of a dipoles can be generated ok. This is the first one is called electronic polarization, second one is called atomic polarization, third one is called orientation polarization and the fourth one is called space charge polarization. So, let us see what exactly mean uh, by this uh, terminologies. On the left we have a situation when there is no field. So, it is an equilibrium situation there is no field is applied. On the right the situation when a field is applied. Now, in this you can see there is a electron within electronic when you are considering electronic polarization we are focusing our attention with a uh, to each individual atoms. Each atom has a positive core or a nucleus around which there is a electron cloud ok. There is an electron cloud large number of electron clouds are moving around the positive core ok. So, that is the ion core and around that is the electron cloud. So, this is negatively charged and this one is positive the center is the positively charged. So, center of the negative charge here because of the uniform distribution symmetrical distribution is also at the core of the atom where there is a positive charge. So, there is a net distance of separation is nil there is no net distance uh, net, net distance of separation. So, there is no dipole moment generated although there is a positive charge and negative charge, but d is 0. So, when you are talking about q into d uh, d is 0 therefore, there is no polarization. So, it is a uh, unpolarized situation ok unpolarized situation of the atom. But when we apply an electric field, this is the direction of the field, there is a separation. That means, the electron cloud is no longer spherically symmetric, but it becomes ellipsoidal ok. Once it becomes ellipsoidal, the center of negative charge is here and the positive charge is here and therefore, there is a net distance of separation. And so, just by applying electric field, there is a redistribution of the charge and therefore, you will get a dipole moment and the particular atom gets polarized. So, that is happening in the atomic level within each atom, each of these atoms will have uh, a uh, electronic polarization sets in when an electric field is applied. Next is uh, uh, atomic polarization. Now, in this case we are talking about 
two different atoms, not electrons, these are two different atoms. Okay. So, this, uh, there is a bond, chemical bond between this atom and this atom, the spring represents some kind of bond. So, they are not free, they are not completely free, they have some kind of binding energy or binding force and that spring, spring represents that. Okay. So, initially this is the distance of separation. Okay. Unlike here the distance of separation 0, uh, here there is a distance of separation because one cation for example, one cation is located next to one anion, but the there is a distance of separation or interatomic spacing. So, these are actually interatomic spacings which is shown here and the spring is represents a, a, a some kind of bond or some kind of uh, uh, binding force between the two. So, there is a if you are just considering this set of negative and positive ion there is a polarization. However, when you are talking about the, uh, the whole, whole solid uh, these moments will cancel each other because they are distributed in a random fashion and there is not only random fashion there are systematic fashion. So, that the overall uh, overall dialectic moment or dipole moment is 0. So, one is positive uh, one is uh, directed in this direction may be the next one will be directed in, uh, in the opposite direction and as a result the whole uh, solid will have a net 0 dialectic. Uh, moment or dipole moment. However, when you apply electric field just like here, there this spin is elongated or extended. So, the distance of separation between these two and the distance of separation between these two in this condition is not same, this may be little higher than this. So, as a result the there will be again a net dipole moment. So, there will be uh, increase in dipole moment uh, in this situation compared to that situation. So, that is also give rise to polarization. So, this is a, a atomic uh, polarization or sometimes also called ionic polarization because if there are ions actually it happens between the ions this is one uh, this is an anion and this is an cation. So, it is more of an ionic polarization, but it is taking place in the atomic level a pair of atom atomic level. Then there is another th third kind of polarization what we call a orientation polarization. This is a very special case in some materials not in all materials. Uh, in some of the materials uh, there is already a dipole moment present. Okay. We will see a group of materials uh, called ferroelectric materials where just like ferromagnetic materials, ferromagnetic materials you have magnetic dipoles here in ferroelectric materials you have an electric dipoles already present because of certain crystallographic uh, consideration or crystallographic nature of that particular structure. So, in such cases you have just like a ferromagnetic material you have a dipole moments present already. Okay. Some dipole moments are already present, but they are randomly distributed okay. here they are in a random fashion uh, directed in different directions um, and therefore, the net dipole moment of the overall solid is 0 here. However, when you apply an electric field they try to align themselves because they have a dipole moment they have a particular direction in which they want to remain and if you apply an electric field from outside they actually try to align themselves along the field, along the field directions. May not all of them, all of them may not completely align, they may not come parallel to each other, but depending on the applied electric field, uh, they will tend to come parallel to the electric field. So, consequently, there will be change in the overall dipole moment. So, this from a zero dipole moment situation because of the randomness because of the randomness uh, you have uh, 0 dipole moment overall dipole moment of the solid is 0 
whereas in this case because of the realignment there will be a net dipole moment. So, that is also another way the material can get polarized or respond to an applied electric field. So, this is the third kind of so that is why because it involves only a orientation reorientation of the dipole moment it is called orientation polarization. The fourth one the last one is space charge polarization. This is very similar to an electrochemical system okay. the polarization which happens in an electrochemical system. Electrochemical system we have an electrolyte and the electrode and there is an interface. So, in uh, el any electrochemical system there is a charge transport through the electrolyte and then the charge gets neutralized at the interface of the electrode electrolyte interface. Okay. So, uh, and if this interfacial reaction is not fast enough compared to the volume uh, movement of the charge within the electrolyte, then there may be a charge accumulation at the surface at the impact at the interface of the uh, electrolyte elect, um, electrode electrolyte interface. In fact, we have seen that here also you more or less when you are talking about a capacitor, the parallel plate capacitors which we have discussed earlier, it is basically uh, analogous to an electrochemical system where the electrolyte is the dielectric and the electrode is uh, the parallel pla uh, conductor semi uh, conductor plates. So, there may be uh, accumulation because there is a small range small uh, length or short range movement of the ions. Uh, so, uh, there may be a rearrangement of ions at the interface if this may be the interface this is this is one here you can see both char, uh, negative and positively charged uh, charges are distributed more or less randomly. So, there is no net uh, accumulation of charge or net dipole moment is 0 once again in this case, but because of the short range orders or sometimes there may be a long range order uh, not short range order short range movement. Uh, you can see here after the application of the electric field the negative charges goes towards right and the positive charges tend to go towards the left. And because of the interface there they are not getting fully re, uh, neutralized with the electrodes placed here and therefore, more number of positive charge gets accumulated on this surface and more number of negative charges gets accumulated on the other surface. So, instead of a complete random distribution you have a preferred distribution uh, on one side the positive charges moves in one direction and the negative charge moves in the other direction and they gets accumulated on the surface or the interface and that also give rise to a total uh, or increase in dipole moment and therefore, a polarization. Okay. So, this is the last kind of uh, polarization mechanisms. So, you have four different kind of mechanisms by which the material can get polarized or creation of dipole moments or increase in dipole moment okay. that is what can happen. Uh, in fact, uh, there is uh, another uh, in a continuation with these mechanisms uh, here uh, these uh, four has been subdivided into actually six. Well, we have uh, once again these are mechanisms the electronic mechanisms does not have any subclassification atomic or ionic that also do not have uh, any uh, subclassification, but the other two this is orientation polarization and the interfacial polarization has two different sub subgroups. Uh, one is high frequency and this low frequency. Okay. So, high frequency dipolar or orientation present in normally ferroelectrics as I mentioned earlier and low frequency dipolar present in linear dielectrics or sometimes in glasses. So, there is a sub classification of this orientation polarization. So, in both these cases there is already a permanent dipole moments present, but they are of different nature and so there is a sub classification here. So, these two are actually two subgroups of uh, orientation polarization and similarly the last one uh, the um, 
space charge polarization also have two different subgroups. One is called interfacial space charge at electrodes as you mentioned and interfacial space charge at heterogeneities such as grand boundaries. Well, I have mentioned just now that it is a normally a, a electrode electrode interface acts as a accumulation center or accumulation site for the charge carriers uh, or the charges. But if there is a inhomogeneities for example, a grain bound in a polycrystal material particularly in ceramics you have grain boundaries which is inhomogeneities and that also creates a some kind of a surface. So, when charges are moving across trying to move across the grain boundaries there may be an accumulation because of the imperfections of the lattice. So, uh, in addition to the metal interface or the metal electrodes uh, interface with the insulator or the, with the dielectric, within the dielectric itself there may be some inhomogeneities and that may also act as a site for accumulation of charges where the charges are not properly neutralized uh, and therefore, there will be accumulation and that accumulation will lead to the um, enhancement in the dielectric moment or generation of dipoles and dipole moment. So, that is also a center where polarization can take place. So, uh, this is uh, the polarization mechanism and uh, I think we can complete it here today. Uh, the frequency dependence of different polarization mechanisms I think we will take it up uh, in the next lecture. Thank you so much.